stop by Jay and Lori's booth here at Arabesque and More. They specialize primarily in boa constrictors and you guys have honestly some of the nicest boas I've seen here at the show today. Thank, Thank you. you. So you guys want to introduce a couple of snakes to us and talk about their genetics? The Let's start one. off with this one. This is gorgeous. And this one is an Aztec Arabesque Cross and it, that produces the heavy pattern and there's two lines of pastel brought in there, so that makes all the different colors that go with it. Wow, all it's gorgeous. All of the gorgeous. yellows and the pinks on her side. That's what we tried to, to get. Now, let me ask you, because I'm not very familiar with boa genetics. In order to reproduce an animal like this, what would you need to do? You'd have to have the combination of an arabesque gene, Aztec gene, the Coops pastel gene and the red pastel. Wow, so there's a lot of stuff going on there. You guys put a lot of work, obviously, into creating them. Yes, thank you. All right, so let's see what else you guys got, because I know you guys brought another amazing boa out to show us. Wow, look at the second boa. This thing is absolutely wild. Tell us about this one. So that is a sister to the one that you just saw in the albino form. It's an Aztec and an Arabesque bred together with the two different pastel lines, the Coops pastel and the red pastel. And that brings out all the color of the red along with the pattern that these guys have. That's absolutely incredible. I mean, I honestly have never seen boas that look like this. It's absolutely beautiful. A lot of kids and a lot of families watch my channels. If somebody wants to get a boa as a pet, a couple of recommendations. What would you recommend to make sure that they set up properly? So they have very exacting temperature requirements and humidity requirements. Get that tank set up. The second thing I would do is make sure when you purchase the animal that the breeder is habituated as the people. You want an animal that's been held regularly, that's as calm as this, because you don't want a five foot animal that's going to be afraid of people. The other thing that I'd suggest is make sure that it's uh, switched over to frozen thawed food versus live food. That's so much easier for the animal and obviously for the keeper. Guys, they have so much cool stuff. You guys are on Facebook, correct? We yes, we are. Arabesque and more. So, guys, Facebook right here, Arabesque and more. They have some absolutely amazing boas. A lot of stuff that's affordable, too, for the regular hobbyists. Yeah. And some amazing, gorgeous colors. So, thank you guys so much. Thank I really so appreciate nice it. You. Thank you. Enjoy the show. Thank you, guys. So I got John's jungle here, Mr. John himself. Remember from my last video in Pomona, we did some amazing stuff. He showed us off some really cool snakes. Today you're gonna show us something really interesting that caught my eye, which is an, an iguana. Yeah, right? an albino so green talk iguana. To, an albino green iguana. So talk to us a little bit about what this is. Just your basic common green iguana, but now it's been made into albino form. Okay. Anything that kind of relies on sunlight doesn't do that well. It's an albino, but this one seems to be fine, alert, checking you out came down quite a bit and uh, I don't know, just overall neat pet. The colors on that animal is just unbelievable. Guys, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but that green and yellowish color is just so bright. Now, how do they retain this color over time? It tends to vary. You know, some of them will get really rich in color and some will get really light. But this one looks like on the lighter form, more is, of a yellow than an orange. Is this something that's completely random or can you genetically lime breed these to get better and better color over time? Yeah, so Tom Crutchfield's really done a great job in lime breeding these and bringing out all the great colors in them. I haven't bred these yet, but maybe in the future. I can't wait to see. Well, you got a couple more animals you want to show us. So guys, let's check out some more stuff. He's got some really awesome stuff here at his booth. All right, John, so the second animal you want to show us is something that you're really, really proud of. Yes, this, very pleased. You're saying this is possibly a world's first? Yep, that's what I was told. This is absolutely amazing, guys. So tell us what this is. So this is a motley jungle moon glow boa. And what's really special about this animal? Well, it has recessive and co-dominant genes in it. The jungle and the motley gene are co-dominant. Okay. And it's also, it's a hypo, Sun glow, so that's absolutely get that incredible. In there, moon glow. So 
Are you saying that this is pretty much the only one in existence currently in the world? That's what I was told. I did not produce this one, but I did get it yesterday in a trade, and I'm very pleased to have it. I think I might be keeping this one. That's absolutely incredible, guys. The color on this animal is just mind-blowing. I just, for some reason, love the boas that have the whites, the creamy colors. Those are the kind of boas that I love. So seeing this thing in person is absolutely mind-blowing, and thank you so much for showing it. One more time, it's a Jungle Motley Moon Glow boa. Yes. Awesome. All right, John, so another awesome boa you want to show us, a third one. Now, this is also a world's first. Yeah, this is the first and only one I've ever heard and seen. I had to have it, got it yesterday, and man, is it impressive. That's insane, and I got a lot of people that follow me that are boa fans, so I'm sure they're gonna appreciate the absolute beauty of the snake. So tell us what it is. VPI Sun Glow Blood. A VPI Sun Glow Blood. So hypo albino blood. That's amazing. It's now, VPI. one thing I see about this boa is just how rich the reds are on it. That's absolutely amazing. Do you know if there's any boas out there that have deeper reds, or is this pretty much how deep as it gets? I think some of the blood stuff has been very red, but with VPI, nobody's ever done it, so we have no idea. We can only hope that this would be the reddest one. So this is something that you guys want to continue approving upon, all the boa breeders out there. Yes. What do you think is the most attractive color right now in the boa game? Is it the reds, the whites? I like the reds, the blood sharp, and the blood calls are really nice, but now this is a blood VPI, so a whole nother gateway to red. That's incredible. Guys, for all you boa fans out there, these are some of the most incredible boas. John, we're gonna move on to the next snake. All right. Before we do that, I just wanna get a couple of scenic shots of this animal. All right, John, continuing with the boa theme, this thing is mind-blowing. Tell us what it is. This one is a VPI Snow Glow Jungle. I loved how you caught this one in the corner of your eye. You wanted to get it out, we got it out, and it's kind of a little cooler than an all-white one, right? It has some meat pattern, loving the flex. Well, that's why it caught my eye, because you already know that my favorite boas are like the super diamonds, the fires, the whites, but this, thing is like the closest thing you, I've seen so far that's white also with pattern on it and it looks absolutely crazy. Is this another a world's first or is there a no, few No, this one has been made a few times already so awesome. this, one, uh, this one is exceptional though. It was born kind of small and it's starting to take off quite well. Tell us about the genetics on this one. Like how would you reproduce this animal? So this one you need to have VPI on both sides. Okay, and then it's snow, so you'd have to have albino head anery or anery head albino, and then jungle in there as well. So a couple of recessives, a couple of codoms, all have to line up, and bam, you'll get this. Amazing, I never thought I would want to branch off outside of ball pythons, but seeing some of these boas that you have, I know I'm questioning, I think it's time to get a couple of boas in the collection. So John, thank you so much. I think there's one more you want to show us? Okay. All right, let's, let's check it out. Job. All right, John, so we're gonna end off on one last animal, kind of change it up a little bit, get a lizard on this here. Right. And this is a? Giant Mexican horn lizard. Giant Mexican horn lizard. That looks absolutely insane. Now, talk to us about care requirements and whether or not you would recommend these as pets for the general hobbyists or kids and families. So typically, they make really good pets. They just require crickets, and I dust the crickets with some calcium like once a week. I give them a basking spot of like 120. And they seem to do better in little communities. So I would only really want to sell this to somebody that had a few of them. So you need a couple of them. You need a UVB lighting, I UVB, guess. It's always good to have UVB on all lizards. So they're a diurnal species, basically. That's yeah. why they need all that lighting, mm -hmm. right? Now, in terms of handleability, I can see that this one is absolutely tame and really calm. Are they generally like that, or is this one been worked on? Uh, they're all pretty tame and calm, actually. They just want to cling to you and hang out. Unless you're a cricket, you'll be fine. That's amazing. So if you guys are looking for something a little bit different, like lizard, other than the, the traditional leopard geckos and crested geckos, you want to do something a little bit different, this seems like an amazing pet. We've literally had him out for quite a few minutes here. Has not tried to jump, bite, or do anything. That's a neat looking animal. So guys, one more time, this is a Mexican 
Horn lizard, giant Mexican horn lizard. Giant Mexican horned lizard. John, thank you so much for all your time. You've got some crazy wicked animals. Appreciate Again, if my followers want to go and follow you, you've got Instagram at John's Jungle. Yep. You've got Facebook at John's Jungle. Yep. And do you do YouTube as well? I haven't done YouTube yet. I need to fire that up. All right, so we're going to make sure we get John on the YouTube bandwagon after this show. We'll work like together. It. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, John. Yes. You are amazing. Appreciate it. Look who I just ran into. You guys know I run into Dave Coffin all the time at every show. Yeah, because we're everywhere. We're always everywhere. We're everywhere. Well, you're everywhere. I'm everywhere. I'm trying to be. So anything that caught your eye today? You having some good fun? You know, this is how I film two-day shows. I, the first day I run around and I film all the animals, and then the second day I do all the vlog stuff because it's much quieter on the second day. There's not a lot of people here, but yeah, there's a ton of cool stuff. There's a ton of cool retic morphs that I haven't seen anywhere else. You know, one thing I was really blown away by is the monitor stuff. A lot of guys have come with some really a lot amazing of monitors. monitor stuff here. A lot of dart frogs here. Yeah, um, it's cool because you know. Like, for instance, the Toronto Expo that I'm going to be at next month. You hear that, guys? Yep. Toronto. Everybody yep. Canadian, guys? I'll be there. He's going to be at the CRB. But, you know, you, like, you see certain things there. And then you come down here to right. California expecting maybe to see the same things, and you don't. There's other things here, and then Tinley is the same thing. You go to What Tinley I find with Tinley is it's things. a very focused on the snakes. Right. Whereas the Pomona shows, it's like a good mix, a variety Absolutely of different right. reptiles. That just means if you guys haven't been to a Pomona show or you want to plan a trip with the family and the kids, definitely get there, right? Absolutely. I mean, I'm having a blast. You have a blast. You're I always have a blast here. everywhere, yeah. Awesome. So you guys know who Dave Coffin is. Go down in the comments or the description below. Check out his channel. He's got some great content. He tours Thanks. all over the place. And I learned a lot of stuff from your channel as oh, right well. On, so right on. Dave Coffey, guys, thank you so much, man. All right. Great running into you as always. All right. Take care, guys. All right guys, so I'm here with Robert Bruce and he's got one of the most incredible snakes I've ever seen in person. Robert, why don't you tell us a little bit about it? This is the Eastern Indigo Snake. It's North America's largest colubrid. This is from the Colubridae family. Wow. The same family that king snakes, corn snakes, and rat snakes are from. It's an apex predator. It eats anything it can fit into its mouth, including rattlesnakes. It's a snake eater and a frog eater primarily, but it'll eat anything. It's the friendliest and the most intelligent of all snakes. I think anybody can keep this in captivity, even a beginner, but it's expensive because it's an endangered species. Wow. Uh, this is a red throat form, so if you look at the sides of his face and under his throat, you'll see red. And, and uh, there's also an all black form, and they're just color forms, it's the same species. One last question for you, you said that these snakes actually eat rattlesnakes in the wild. Yes. Does that mean that they have immunities to the venom that they have? They are immune to rattlesnake venom. Bruce, thank you so much for taking the time to explain to us You're this welcome. amazing snake. Absolutely incredible, guys. And if anybody wants to reach out to you, do you have any social media? Robert.Bruce at sbcglobal.net. All right guys, so I'm pretty much done today. We've gone around to a lot of different booths. I got Romney here. He's actually the show promoter. What's up, Canada? And uh, he just wants to say a little hi quickly before I head out of here for the day. So, Thanks for coming out, Jordan, seriously. Listen, you, great your shows are phenomenal. Thank you, bro. And it looks like this show is beating records from last it always, year. It just, it just topples every other show. It's amazing. And our next show is gonna be in January at the Anaheim Convention Center. To give you an idea, the building is three acres, 750 booths. It's gonna be a massive show. It's three gonna, acres. Three acres. It's a massive building. Holy you God. almost see the curvature of the earth. It's so big. So I better come here with a segue. Yeah, that yeah. <laughs> yeah, with an extra battery too. Yeah, I know, right? 
Well, your shows are amazing. Thank you. We were packed in here like sardines today, and we are about mid-afternoon, and it's still quite busy. It's insane. Yeah. So yeah, the Rob, line was almost—I'd say almost half a mile long this morning when it started. That's and it was a many. thick line. It wasn't one person. It was a thick line. And you're seeing constant growth every year. Every every show, yeah, for sure. Awesome. For sure. So guys, this is Romney, the show promoter at the Reptile Super Show. Big announcement next January. It's going to be held in the Anaheim Convention Center. And if you Center. come from Canada, you got your boarding pass. You show it to me. You get VIP all weekend. VIP all weekend. So all you Canadians watching this channel, make sure you go down. Get out here. Get out here. Have some fun. Rami, thank you so much Thanks, for putting Jordan. on such thank a great you. show. For doing it. With that said, guys, go down to the comments, smash the like button, leave me a comment, tell me what you thought. Go down, go check out Romney. He's on Instagram as well. And I'll be sure to catch you guys on the next video. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Peace. Peace.